Welcome back. And if you've been watching these videos, you'll notice a new art piece up there that is not supposed to signify or symbolize today's market action. Uh, a friend of mine gave me an art piece and I just hung it up. So it's very nice. I like it a lot. If you are interested in that art piece right there or something like that one right there, he's got plenty of others, hit me up. His name is Gabe Aiello. I can happily put you in touch with him and he'll uh, sell you something that you want. So with that, let's get back into today's video with some notes. Now, before we get into today's video, I want to say that I don't want to repeat what we talked about yesterday. I want to talk about new stuff. Um, and then, uh, you know, if you want what kind of led to today, if you want to know what happened today, watch yesterday's video. We talked a whole lot about what something, you know, what, what, what the market should do and we're seeing it happen today. So different analysis yesterday, we'll do a little bit uh, more big picture stuff today and address some misunderstandings in the market and the mainstream narrative. So before we get into addressing the misunderstandings, let's talk about something. The Fed is not done tightening. They talk about lag effects and they talk about additional rate increases and they talk about balance sheet reduction into perpetuity. So the tightening is not yet done. Not only is the tightening not yet done, but the tightening we have done, we know has a lag effect and we can quantify what some of this tightening is gonna look like. So if you wanna know these numbers, pen and paper, or you can just remember them. The Fed today, Barkin said, they expect in unemployment to get to 4.5%. That is something they want. They've talked about the need for a softening labor market to help get inflation under control. Right now, unemployment's at 3.5%. So you can factor in your projections that unemployment is gonna go from 3.5 to 4.5%. Not saying, you know, you got to run for the hills or anything like that. I'm just telling you that that's what the Fed is talking about. That's what they're expecting to happen. That's what they're looking for. So plan accordingly. Don't think that their work is done. Don't think that the pain of their work is done and the market can just rally to a new all-time high now because the market we had, the post-2020 crash environment we had is definitely not a typical environment. We had a phenomenal economy and president, and the Fed continues to talk about the, 20, the labor market of 2018, 2019, and 2020. And that momentum continued when that president was able to do massive stimulus under the assumption that we would be unlocked from lockdown soon and could save the economy with a little bit of stimulus or a lot of stimulus, but a relatively controlled amount given the kind of growth and the strength the American economy was having before that. And then we relocked down and poured more gasoline on the fire. The combination of the second lockdown and the second stimulus really screwed everything up. And here we are. So don't expect the market to, in one second, change and go back to that crazy stimulus environment. It's not going to. It's going to be a more difficult market, even when things begin to get better. But we know the tightening is not done, and we know there is a lag effect on the impact of the tightening. Two important notions to remember. Now, while we remember those important notions, we should also consider the fact that the Fed is entirely unfazed by what's going on in the market, by the positive energy-driven inflation number we've gotten so far. But importantly and specifically, they don't forecast a recession. They keep saying no recession, no recession. 1% growth this year. You know what that means? The Fed saying no recession and 1% growth? That means no quantitative easing, AKA no rate cuts this year. You know what the market is pricing? Rate cuts. That is crazy. There is no indication that those rate cuts are gonna happen. I get it, weak retail sales today. The Fed is saying no inflation. What matters is not your opinion, but the Fed's opinion. And the Fed is saying no recession. So they have to make a massive leap. 
they have to make several leaps from no recession and 1% growth to then recession, okay? To then combating the recession is more important than inflation. And right now it's not. Right now they're comfortable letting unemployment go to 4.5%. That's their projection. They're saying what they're saying right now with that as a projection. So unless unemployment goes beyond 4.5% to a scary degree, they're not gonna change. And right now we're at 3.5%. We went from 3.7 to 3.5%. So I, I don't get it. I don't get the rate cut thing. I think that is like wishful thinking and nothing more. It's not grounded in reality. It just simply isn't. That's not what's gonna happen. That's not what the Fed's talking about having happen. So we're just gonna fade that philosophy. That's just it. We view that as incorrect. And that's what we talked about on these videos. And yesterday's video was a little bit more informative than today. Today, we're gonna keep things a little big picture just because I don't wanna repeat. I wanna, um, you know, see if I can, if any of this is providing you any value and hopefully helping you hear something a little differently and then possibly see it a little differently, which is definitely a good thing. And if it does, or you have any questions or comments, please, please leave them down. I will respond 100%. Unless it's like a death threat. <laughs> Spending is shifting and hurting heavyweights. So the Fed is saying no recession. We're seeing plenty of strength in the airlines. We're seeing good jobs data. It's hard to see how there's weakness that will impact the market at least on the surface of things, if you go a little too macro and don't include any specifics. But if you include specifics, you'll know advertising going down the toilet hard, electronics going down the toilet hard, a lot of tech spend, business to business, business soft SaaS businesses, Salesforce. These are the biggest companies in the world. More importantly, they are the heaviest weights on the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 by a lot, by a lot. They have been the ones that have been able to command premiums well above value stock averages, well above overall market averages, well above in some cases competitor averages because they've been putting up growth, double digit growth. They were considered growth companies. Not only is their growth slowing, but they might be contracting. Imagine if we had to call these businesses, instead of growth companies, contracting companies. Wouldn't that be crazy? That would be scary. You wouldn't buy a contracting company. Everyone, no, everyone wanted to avoid oil stocks because they viewed them as contracting. And they avoided them for years and years and years. Not saying that the tech companies are gonna trade like oil stocks, but I don't think they can command the historical, very deep premium that came with double digit growth that was incorrectly extrapolated every year into the future, essentially. Incorrectly, okay? The money supply isn't growing. So they can grow, definitely. You can grow in a stable money supply, but you can't grow massively because there's no reason to have as much inflation. So there's that and huge weights on the market, potentially gonna pull them down. I had one more point I wanted to bring up, but I, I'm, I'm just blanking on it right now. Might have to save it for tomorrow and call that a video for today. If you have any questions, again, please, I love receiving questions. That's what I do. If you're not a client, you get the questions for free. And if you are a client, you get more than the questions for free and you get full service management. However, to be a client, you legally, if you're a US citizen, need to have a net worth of 2.1 million because we only charge a performance fee. We're not doing a rake. We're not doing any of that. This is hardcore maximum force market management, performance only fee. So that's interesting to you. If you want to diversify, possibly get exposure to a couple different strategies, we'd love to have you. So please reach out, you can comment down below, or you can go to leftskewed, L-E-F-T-S-K-E-W-E-D.com, and you can fill out the form, and we'll be in touch.
pretty shortly if that's the case, if you reach out. So that's today's video. And until next time, peace out.